it's it's on the chat the uh, the PDF Chomorchei. So this year Shabbos Mevarachim Chodesh Nissan is the day right before Rosh Chodesh Nissan. Chodesh Nissan is a, two ways it could the, the year can fall out. One way is where Shchedish could fall out a few days after Shabbos. Or Shchedish Nisan Chomiyad Lachay Shabbos. Or Shchedish Nisan could fall out, as does this year, immediately after Shabbos. Kfiyash Anazu. She can make Mamutsa, when a Kfiyash Shchedish Nisan Chol Kamiyam Lachay Shabbos, the Kfiyash Shchedish Nisan Chol Shabbos. This Shabbos, this year, it's like in between. Some years, Shchedish Nisan falls out on Shabbos itself. Some years, Rosh Chodesh Nisan falls out a few days in the week after the Shabbos that blesses a month in this. And this year, it's sort of in the middle. It's not on Shabbos. It's not a few days after Shabbos. It's immediately after Shabbos, you have Rosh Chodesh. Ki av shesh Chodesh Nisan in a chob, shabbos atzim l'chein keren, b'hash Chodesh, b'shabos l'fei Rosh Chodesh, b'shabos l'fei Rosh Chodesh, and a kivan she'ein hefzik b'in Shabbos Rosh Chodesh, shabos Shabbos l'fei Rosh Chodesh, eish b'ei shaychos, v'men on nilchos m'yad Rosh Chodesh, even though Rosh Chodesh does not fall out on Shabbos itself, since there is no interruption between Shabbos and Rosh Chodesh, Shabbos becomes Erev Rosh Chodesh. Shabbos, Shabbos becomes the day that prepares for and is precedes day of Rosh Chodesh. And as a connection, because from Shabbos, we immediately go into Rosh Chodesh. So it's similar to reading Parsha Rosh Chodesh on Rosh Chodesh. Because it's it's it, it's directly preceding Rosh Chodesh. A Peter of Al Shemtiv, she called over Shudi Reu Shemei Mahava Irov in this location. Al Shemtiv says, "Whatever you see, whatever you hear, is a message from God for you to serve Hashem." This is something which is very logical. It's, it's very obvious. Why? The key machine in the race Hashem Shaskeni. Since I was not created for any other reason. But to serve my master, Hari Muvan Shem Kol Rega Tzarech Hashem Shaskeini Kedei Latzik Asabri Yosef Rega Zeh. So every moment I have to serve my Creator in order to justify my existence. This moment, why do I exist right now? I exist this moment to serve Hashem. So I have to serve Hashem right now, where I'm not justifying my existence. The Kiyum Ter Mitzvahs V'Cholos and Hagav Beivet Shol Kol Masachim Shem Shemayim Chol Tachlei By keeping Ter Mitzvahs. And as the Torah says, all your deeds should be done for the sake of heaven. Meaning, even, even if it's not a mitzvah, in all your ways, your own ways, you're supposed to know Hashem. If you see or hear something that happens in the world without any effort, if something comes to you, you didn't try to go see it, but it just came to you. If you believe that there is a creator to, this, to the world, then you must believe that what you saw, what you heard, is not an accident. Rather, the creator of the world, he brought that thing to you. There's a connection to you and that thing that you saw or heard. Not just there's a connection, but you become one with the thing that you saw. By learning a message in a lesson in serving Hashem, you unite with what you've experienced and it becomes part of who you are in, in, your, in your behavior. So that if you believe in Hashem and you believe that Hashem created you to serve Him, so then why did Hashem send something your way? It must be that it's for the purpose of serving Hashem. If your existence is only to serve Hashem and Hashem caused you to see something or hear something, certainly it's about you serving Hashem. Therefore, you're supposed to absorb <clears throat> whatever you saw or heard and translate it somehow in your service of Hashem. The Yishlum, so what the Baal Shantav said there, but saying is not something that you need the Baal Shantav to really say. Baal Shantav is the one who said it, but it's something that it, it, it's very obvious that this is just the way it is. It's not some, some mystical Hasidic teaching that we can't follow. It's just logical. Hashem made you right now, and He showed this to you right now, and your whole purpose of being here is just to serve Him. So why did you see this? Must be to serve Hashem. We need to learn a lesson from the fact that Parsha Sachedesh is read right juxtaposed to Rosh Chedesh. Without any interruption between them. 
And a message, a lesson, not only for this year, but for all time. There are in other Fabring and Zebra said that when a calendar is set up in a certain year to be a certain way, so the lessons from that year's calendar are more relevant to that year, but they're, they are relevant to all years. It's just that since this year is the way the calendar is set up, therefore there is a, a, a stronger emphasis on the way the, on the way on that lesson that's learned from the calendar on that particular year. But if Hashem showed it to you, it's not just a message for that day and that year, it's a message for all time. It's only that if this is the calendar for this year, this is the there's this is where the focus has to be. Okay, uh, is that, we're on the second uh, page, page four. You have not the rain and the Understand what the message is. Why is it that Shabbos of Varcham and falls out immediately preceding Rishchayesh Nissen? Understand this by first prefacing a story the previous Rebbe related about Pesach. Back to Shachaga Pesach or Ikinon Shashchesh Nissen. Pesach is the essence of what the first day of Nissen is about. And therefore, the story is relevant. Rosh Hashanah Lergalim, Regal Shabbat Rosh Hashanah Lergalim. There are four Rosh Hashanahs, the Gemara says. Rosh Chayish Nisan is called Rosh Hashanah for Yamim Tevin. So, why is it called Rosh Hashanah for Yamim Tevin? Because it has in it the Yantiv, which is the Rosh, Rosh Hashanah for all Yamim Tevin. Pesach is the first of all Yamim Tevin. So since Rosh Nisan contains, the month of Nisan contains within it, the, the Yantav of Pesach, which is the head of all Yomim Tevim, so therefore Rosh Nisan is called the Rosh Hashanah for Yomim Tevim because it has Pesach in it. So the essence of Rosh Nisan is its connection to Pesach. A similar phenomenon we find in the Parsha that we're going to read this week, the extra Parsha, Parsha Sachedesh. Yes, the first Parsha talks about Rosh but the rest of the Parsha that we're going to read talks about Pesach. So it's a similar thing that we're saying about Rosh Nisan. It's Rosh Hashanah, but the main element of Rosh Nisan is its connection to Pesach. And therefore, it's appropriate time to say a story about Pesach. Here's the story. The Hasidim who would visit Semach Tzedek would receive from the Semach Tzedek their needs for Pesach. He would send to them whatever they needed for Pesach. At least if they didn't receive all the things that they needed while they stayed in the city of Lubavitch, uh, visiting the Semach Tzedek, at the very least, they receive from the Tzemach Tzedek through a messenger their needs for the Seder, Matzah, the Mar. And the way it worked was the Tzemach Tzedek would not wait till the day before Pesach to send the various Hasidim who were visiting the guests their Pesach needs. They would receive the needs for their Seder a few days before Pesach. They should or that they should be comfortable, they shouldn't be disturbed. So a few days before Pesach, whatever was relevant to remembering our exodus, whatever was relevant to leaving Mitzrayim that they needed specifically for Pesach, they got from Tzemach Tzedek a few days before. Rabbi Cheskel Droyer arrived to the home of Tzemach Tzedek the day before Pesach. And he complained that he doesn't have yet the needs for the Seder. We had Nasirash, Hayatachan, automatically, when he made that complaint, there was all, all of a sudden, suddenly became a tumult in the household of Tzemach Tzedek. How could that be? How could he didn't get it yet? Why didn't Yechazkel Droyer get his needs yet? Why didn't he get the, the, the Seder stuff? Jeshal, Tzemach Tzedek, Pesha Davers, they asked Tzemach Tzedek. Tzemach Tzedek said he certainly was sent all whatever he needed for the Seder through the Shamash. Like everybody else, Yechaskel Droyer got whatever he uh, whatever he needed for the Seder. It was his buyer. Then they found out what happened. What happened? It's true. The Shamash, the attendant, 
The Gabbai, the Tzimach Tzedek, brought this chassid, whatever he needed for the Seder. But one in Bicheskel, who was so engrossed in the service of Hashem, he heard that the Tzimach Tzedek had sent him something. He didn't think about it. Without even waiting at all, he ate whatever he got from the Tzimach Tzedek, he ate it right away. And he said what the Tzemach Tzedek had sent him that time helped him, whatever he was involved in, whatever he was meditating on, whatever he was davening with, whatever, whatever it was that he was involved in at that moment, Tzemach Tzedek's parcel uh, package that Tzemach Tzedek had sent to him helped him. And and the Tzemach Tzedek, whatever happened in that story was, the Tzemach Tzedek invited this Tzemach Tzedek to have the Seder with him. So here what happened. The guy was so into his davening and learning and the Shamash came to him and said, here's a package of the Tzemach Tzedek. Tzemach Tzedek, Tzemach Tzedek. So he didn't even think twice. He right away ate up the whole package and without even realizing later this was for the uh, for the Seder. So much so he was surprised he didn't get them packaged for the Seder because it's hard for us to imagine this kind of, uh, this kind of person. But this was not the fame. This was the, the real guy. He he got in something from Tzedek. Tzedek. So he right away he ate it. And then so much so that he had no idea that this is that, that he that Tzemach Tzedek's package had come to him for the Seder. And he had uh, he just came from the Rebbe. He said right away go for, he, he didn't on another occasion. I don't know if that's this this for bringing another occasion. The Rebbe said the story, and he said that that logically there's a question about what he did. Now I'd eat matzah before Pesach. So how do you eat the matzah before Pesach? It's a lachic question. And how could it be that his devotion to, to Hasidus caused him to transgress a, uh, a, 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 a prohibition of eating matzah before Pesach? If I remember correctly, I think it was in Tavshin Yudal, if you look up the Sicha, the Rebbe said then at that time that because he, we're talking about someone who was so engrossed in the service of Hashem, for him it wasn't, why can't you eat matzah before Pesach? It's supposed to preserve the taste of the matzah for the Seder. This guy, he didn't taste matzah. He just tasted that something came from Tzemach Tzedek. He came tasted this is from the Rebbe. There's no sense of, of, his, of his palate over here. This was, this, for him, this was just something from Tzemach Tzedek. That in the sense of, of um, uh, what it was. So here the Rebbe asks a different question. This, this story requires more explanation. Didn't you have a Cheskel know that the Tzemach Tzedek would send the needs of the Seder for everybody a few days before Pesach? He came to the Asad and said, how do you do that? How could he eat it a few days before? He knows the way it works. Tzemach Tzedek sends you the matzah and the mar if he is before Pesach. You came to Lubavitch, you're a guest. Here is your privilege as a guest. Tzemach Tzedek sends you this package. He knows the, the order, how it works. And this this uh, for bringing a big, a different angle. It says he for sure knew what he was eating. He probably knew what he was eating. Because probably made a bracha. In order to say a bracha on the matzah and a bracha on the mar, you have to know, you have, you have to know what they are. You know this is matzah and this is mar. So, so how do you do this? Ibn Cheska was in such a state, you couldn't ask questions about him because he was so not an entity for himself. His whole entity was, his whole being was, he, that he was a chassid in Samachzadik. The whole existence of a Jew is only to serve Hashem. Believing in God is connected into believing in Moshe Rabbeinu. Michilta says, anyone who believes in the faithful shepherd, meaning anyone who believes in Meisher Rabbeinu, it says, if they believe in the one by whose world, word the world came to be. So, since the whole existence of a Jew is to serve Hashem, and believing in Hashem and serving Hashem is associated with Meisher Rabbeinu, because you believe in Meisher Rabbeinu, the Michilta says, it's as if you believe in Hashem. Volachim. When something came to him from his Rebbe, so he knew this must be relevant to him at this very moment. 
immediately took it and ate it in a way that became flesh, his own flesh and blood. And actually, we see it, it worked. It helped him to do what he needed to do at that moment. And not only did it work, he gained big time. He got, a, he got the golden ticket. He got invited and Semach Sadiq won't say there. So not only was this not considered something negative in the country, it was, it was he gained by it at the moment and he got invited Semach Sadiq. So in short, what happened over here? Zebra asked the question, how come he ate it? Didn't he know? And there was answering, you can't ask a question about it because he was in such a state that there are no questions. What was the state he was in? The state he was in was, there's no, there's no me. All there is, is Hashem. And I'm only here to serve Hashem. And here's something that came to, to him from Moshe Rabbeinu, from the Abishter. And therefore, it, it, it's, it's relevant to right now. That, that's, that's the state he was in. That's, and, that, and that's something which was, which was the right place for him to be in. And it worked. And it, he, got, he ate the, the matzah and the mar, and that helped him do what he needed to do as, and, and where he was up to in the service of Hashem. And not only that, but also caused him to gain later to be invited to Masad. What does that do with people like us? Ramasi said, message for us is like this. Since this story was said by a Rebbe, about a Rebbe in public, certainly there's a message here. The Friedrich Rebbe said the story about Samach Sadek. A Rebbe said the story in public about another Rebbe. For sure, there is a message here. What's a message? You have to use everything for the service of Hashem immediately. When you see or hear about something, something specific, by divine providence, the moment you hear about it, you have to use it to serve Hashem. Human nature is that when you are inspired to do something, you do it immediately. When you do something that you're inspired to do um, right away, so there's a different kind of energy than if you do than if you would do it later. Even if you are a faithful servant of Hashem and you're alive with what Hashem wants you to do. But if you do it later, after the inspiration begins, you, you wait a little bit, it dissipates. So that's what's supposed to happen when you, Hashem shows you something, you hear something, you right away have to take the energy and immediately move with it, because if you wait, you're going to lose out. I try to share this with you, hold on a second. Um, There's a teaching about the Mishkan. Wait, I find it right now. I think it's in, either in this parasha or parasha's truma. It says the Jewish people donated for the Mishkan, but they donated a different amount than they originally planned. Why did they need a different amount than they originally planned? Because they didn't give it right away. The Pasuk hints to that when you go... Oh, here we go. It's in, it's in this week's parasha, Take. In chapter 35, Perak Lamei, Pasuk Chof Aleph. Um... It says like this, and all, every person came whose heart was inspired and anyone who had an unanimous spirit uh, brought a donation to, for Hashem to build the, the Mishkan. So the Chidah says that, that human nature is that when you have inspiration to give something, do a mitzvah, after a while you cool off and you don't do the mitzvah in the same way that you originally thought of doing it. Like if you hear about a family which is poor and needs help, so you you feel like you want to give a certain amount of money. But after time passes, you don't give them the original amount that you thought of. But the Mishkan was unique. The Torah says they did exactly, they did exactly what they thought of originally. The same thing they were inspired to give. It's the same thing that they had a unanimous spirit to give. That's exactly what they gave. It wasn't they were inspired to give, and then the things changed later. But Kolisha should not look at the Pasuk is very exact. Whatever, who, everyone, any person who was lifted by his heart, any person who had an animus spirit, that is what they gave. They gave that thing that they, that they were inspired to give. There was no separation between their between what they were inspired to do and what they actually actually did. That's what the Chidah says. So 
that's how we're supposed to act in general when Hashem sends us something our way that we see or hear something, it's, it has to be used immediately. I saw um, in Jem published this um, audience that I have a few years ago, I think it was about, yeah, it's about a Mitzin Raider. You can look it up on, on the Jem's website. Mitzin Raider was an audience of the Rebbe and he was discussing about uh, various people that come to his office and how he responds to them. The Rebbe said to him something to the effect of, when you go out to see someone and talk to someone about Yiddishkeit, so it's, it's not as clear to you if it's by divine providence. When someone comes to your office to talk to you about Yiddishkeit, that's clearly by divine providence. It has nothing to do with you. So therefore, you have to, uh, you have to pay attention. And there we gave him some instruction about what he should have. I think, I think he was supposed to have some pamphlets about uh, the, the, the various Mifsa campaigns. Anyways, moving right along. So what's, why is it relevant to what we're talking about today? This, this concept of moving with divine providence as soon as you see something right away to move because that's what happens at Shabbos. Right after we read about Parshas HaChadosh, right after we read about Rosh Chodesh Nisan, right after Shabbos, we have Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Let's go to Ois. Um, hey. So too, we have a message over here in the fact that the day before Rosh Chodesh falls out on, on Shabbos. The whole essence of day before his is as follows, says in the Torah, tomorrow, um, this is the story in the Aftera of Marcha Chodesh, where David is having a conversation with the innocent. And the innocent tells David, tomorrow is Rish Chedesh, my father's going to have this meal that he has every, every Rish Chedesh, and your place will be remembered because it, your seat will be empty. So that Pasuk also alludes to how the before there is the new moon, the, uh, the moon is, um, com- before the new moon, before the middle of Nirvana, the moon becomes completely hidden. So the moon gets smaller and smaller until Yipak and Meshavecha, it's, it's uh, so to speak, absent. And by the moon becoming absent, so then the moon gets renewed. So just like by David Amalek, by him not being there, there was this, uh, he, was re- he was remembered. Can I help you? Hello? Sorry? Who is it? Oh, go down the hall the other way. Go down, take a right and then down the hall. No, 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 no. Down, down the hall. Oh, yeah. Go through the doors. Go, go Okay, so just like it says about David Amel, by him not being there, his place was remembered. People remembered him because he wasn't there. So too, by the moon first becoming smaller and smaller until it's not there, that's how it's remembered, so to speak. That's how the moon is renewed. The moon becomes new by not being there. The renewal of the moon is through it disappearing. What does that mean for us in our service of Hashem? The day before Rosh Chodesh is called a small Yom Kippur. This it says this concept that the day before Rosh Chodesh is called a small Yom Kippur in other places, but in Chassidus Rebbe says I only found this one time. In one place in the Chassidus, it says day before Yom Kippur is called the day of miniature Yom Kippur. And that is in the Maimar of the Tzemach Tzedek Ner It says the day before Rosh Chodesh is called, Tzemach Tzedek says these words, day before Rosh Chodesh is called Kippur. Not Yom Kippur, but Kippur Katan. Kippur Katan. So it's, the Chassidus doesn't phrase it the same way that the world phrases it. The Chassidus phrases it, the day before Rosh Chodesh is called Kippur Katan. 
The day before Rosh Chodesh, you're supposed to make a calculation, an honest calculation, of what has happened to you throughout the month before. And that calculation is supposed to assist you in knowing where you need to, what you need to do the next month. Page, page six. This is true on every day that precedes Rosh Chodesh. But there's an additional virtue when the day that precedes Rosh Chodesh is Shabbos. Because on Shabbos, there's more of a shturm, there's more of a tumult than on a regular day that precedes Rosh Chodesh. We have a special haftera that we read when Shabbos falls out the day before Rosh Chodesh. So there, there's more attention to the day before Rosh Chodesh when it falls out on Shabbos. A regular, um, a regular month, the day before Rosh Chodesh, you could go about through that day without noticing it until you get to Mincha where you skip Tachem. But on Shabbos, there's a real focus on tomorrow is Rosh Chodesh. There's, there's a different Haftera, or at least a few Pesukim from the Haftera about tomorrow being Rosh Chodesh. <laughs> You would think that the opposite would be the case. You would think that when do we need to have a special reminder that tomorrow is Rosh Chodesh during the week? During the week, you're involved in all kinds of mundane things. And therefore, Hashem should give us a special assistance to, that we should be aware, hey, tomorrow is Rosh Chodesh. But it's not, that's not the way it is. The opposite. On, when Rosh, the day before Shchish falls out on Shabbos, that's when Hashem gives us a special tumul, a special assistance, and to, to focus on tomorrow's Rosh Chodesh. Avlafa pikein reimer pelish arash minish or every Shchidesh uvdak shkol v'Shabbos. We see, despite what we would have thought, when is there a tumul about Rosh Chodesh? Only when it, on the day before Rosh Chodesh, only when it falls out on Shabbos. Why? Because every Shchidesh will be im chel, shabim mitzavatei l'asvin im chel kol chalashatase. When Rosh Chodesh falls out during the week, and the before Rosh Chodesh falls out during the week, since a Jew is involved in all kinds of mundane things, as the Torah says, God will bless you in all that you do, you can't expect a Jew to completely extricate himself from all kinds of the worldly things he's involved in, and to be in that state of David HaMelech, and you will be remembered because your place is empty, meaning to be completely away from the physical world. As it says in the Gemara, Hashem, as we discussed yesterday, Hashem only asks us to do what we could do. But on Shabbos, when a Jew is in a state which is above the world, that's when you're going to ask from a Jew that he should be in the state of an ifkarata. That's when you can ask a Jew that he should Absorb the message that Yenison told David that the moon is become the moon becomes not uh, stops being visible, which has a message for us in the service of Hashem. We'll discuss some what that is. So that reality, the moon stops being vi- visible, which is a pr- which precedes the moon's renewal. So on a regular weekday, we can be expected to reach that state of not being seen, whatever that means. Only when Rosh Chodesh falls out on, on Sunday and every Rosh Chodesh falls out on Shabbos and we're anyways in a state of above the world because it's Shabbos, that's when Hashem could ask of us that we should reach the state of not being seen. The source in Gemara, in Shachan Aruch, for the fact that the day, when the day before Shechidosh falls out on Shabbos, there is an additional virtue. Where do we find this? This is, seems to be a novel thing that I've been saying, that, the day, that there, there is the day before Shechidosh in a regular month. When it falls out on Shabbos, the day before Shechidosh has a heightened spiritual energy. Where does this come from? This comes from a Gemara. Divya Gemara, B'Sech Tazvachim, O Tu Shabbos Mosafa Nahani Lema Dimin Lo Yohanik B'Tmiyan. And She'af Bisha Timin Nekrem Mechol Yoyim Mekom Kam Deisim Be'im Ilim Mitzal Me'as HaShabbos Le'as Ha'an Begin B'Kore. Gemara says that there are 
two kinds of sacrifices that are brought on a Shabbos. There is the carbon tumid, the regular sacrifice that's brought every day. And there is an additional sacrifice, the carbon musaf, which is only brought on, on Shabbos. There is certain details that are done with the carbon musaf that are not done with the regular sacrifice. But because this daily sacrifice is brought on Shabbos, so just like Shabbos impacts the additional Shabbos sacrifice to have a, a Shabbos dike halachas, the halachas of Shabbos applied to the carbon musaf. So too does Shabbos also annihilate the Shabbos. If Shabbos helps the carbon musaf, certainly it helps also the regular sacrifice. So that means although the sacrifice is brought every day of the week, not just on Shabbos, but because Shabbos adds something to the, if Shabbos adds something to the additional Shabbos sacrifices, certainly says the Gemara, Shabbos also adds the halachas of Shabbos, whatever that is, whatever the, the, the ramifications are. Regarding the carbon musaf, certainly those ramifications exist as well for the carbon tamid. So, and same, same is true for Yom Kippur as well, that Shabbos adds something to, uh, Yom, Yom Kippur also adds, excuse me, to the carbon tamid. The daily sacrifice has a different status when it's brought on Yom Kippur. So too, regarding the day before Rosh Chodesh, that because it happens on Shabbos, Shabbos adds something to that day. And we will see, Mitzvah Shem, tomorrow, what exactly Shabbos adds to the day before Rosh Chodesh. But we see from the Gemara, though, that this is true. The Gemara says clearly that the daily sacrifice has a different status because when, when, it is, um, when it's brought on, uh, on, 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 uh, on Shabbos. So in short, what do we do today? We, we began analyzing the way the year set up the calendar this year and how this year, what's unique is that it's a sort of in-betweener year. It's not, the Rosh Hashanah doesn't fall out on Shabbos. So on the other hand, it doesn't fall out somewhere in the week. It falls out immediately right after, right after we read about Parshat Zachedish, immediately we have Rosh Hashanah. So we want to know what is the message for us in serving Hashem. And, and we learned the story of Avrib Cheskel Droyer, that when you have a message from serving Hashem, you have to right away take it and use it. Like a Bechesel Droyer immediately ate whatever the Tzemach Sarek sent him. If, if, if a Tzemach Sarek sent this to me right now, I have to use, use this right now. He, he wasn't in a state of asking questions. That's he just like, he was in an elevated spiritual state and therefore a message came from him, from the Tzemach Sarek, from him that, that meant right now, right here. In a similar way, when Hashem sends us something that has to be, has to be right away actionable. So, so in a similar, so, so as we see by Shabbos Rosh Chodesh, that right after Shabbos, right away there's Rosh Chodesh. So, one message is when Hashem sends you something, right away you have to move with it. And there's another message, which we'll get into Mishim tomorrow more, that there's something about Shabbos and Rosh Chodesh and how Shabbos precedes Rosh Chodesh and that, how, that, how that adds something to the day before Rosh Chodesh and adds to Rosh Chodesh as well, as we shall see in Hashem tomorrow. Any questions or comments or criticism? All right. Great day, Dr. Bressman. Great day, Arab Arya. Great day, David. Great day, Rebettel.